When I was a young boy, my father to me. Sorry, man. I just keep getting triggered. Grow up. <laughs> I, I um, had a sad cry once on my own. To Black Parade? Yeah. Um, what are you doing? I don't know, I'm expressing myself. Why like, don't I put my, why I put, why I put my headphones in here? I'm going to do it. <laughs> He's uh, expressing himself. He's in his expressive era at the moment. I'm on my own era's tour. This is your expressive era? It is. Yeah. He didn't do it when he was a, a teenager, so he's doing it now. Anyway, carry on. I we used to go out with a girl at school when I was at high school, and... I was listening to... She was really into My Chemical Romance. I was going to punch you then because I thought you were drinking out of my cup. <laughs> punch me for theft of a coffee. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, back to the story. Yeah, so I had a girlfriend and um, she dumped me at her house. Naturally. Yeah. So I had like a bit of a 40-minute walk home. So it's a bit of a sad one. So I had a three flip phone <laughs> at the time. Mm. And I purchased that song on the way home. 49 pence. Jam stuff, I think it was. And I listened to it all the way home on repeat. Crying. The Black Parade. <laughs> I think this, what you're experiencing now, mm. is because of that moment. What? Well, bleep this name out. No. What's her name? What's her name? I'm not getting sued. Tell me. What's her name? Lucy. We'll go with just Lucy. <laughs> Bleaked that first bit, it has to be bleaked. Hey, Lucy. <laughs> Look what you've done. <laughs> what a <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> right. You said Yeah, I have your view. Yeah? What was your favourite bit? I, mate, it's, it's, it's one of them, innit? Like... All right, mate. I'm just going to cut you off now. Whatever you're going to say about this film, I don't care. All I care about is talking about the geezer's Okay. Let's cut to the chase. Did you did you see his Obviously, at the end, you know. Sophie and Inspector. <laughs> he was doing the, the swirl around his mansion, you know. And I thought, like, he's got a big Ampton, big floppy. <laughs> Disco flopping around. I was like, yeah. fair play. I was like, it's got to be a fake no. you know. I had to Google it. I had to Google it. I was like, sure, that's not his real c So I Googled it. It's his real c Me threatened. Threatened. Intimidated. Intimidated. Yeah. But it could just be, it could be a shower. Like, what's the word? A grower and a shower? Mate, mate a shower. it's okay. Even if he does have a massive c Feel inferior. Okay. Feel inferior. You felt inferior. Fellow Irish native. <laughs> I felt inferior. My flop is nowhere near that big. <laughs> <laughs> not saying it don't get growth. <laughs> Grower, this guy. But, mate, massive Hampton. Like, I, uh, if he was running around your house... You'd, you'd hear him before you see him. <laughs> Slapping his... <laughs> but I think I've got a problem. What, what? What do you mean? A fair few episodes ago now, we accused the world of being obsessed with... Yeah, we did, yeah. That's quite accurate. And I just want to... I want to come clean... Okay. Did you did you miss his nose? Yeah, and this is part of the problem. I am obsessed with each to their own. So I also googled. <laughs> Be careful your next words. I also googled uh, the from Saltburn. Did you? After watching it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Curious. But this is the problem. I always do it. Okay. You know, if there's ever a leak, if there's ever, leak. you know, a scene from a Celebrity. film. Celebrity. Yeah. yeah. Not just <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Celebrity. Celebrity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Obsessed. Because it's just, a, I don't know, it's a curiosity of mine. Uh, the most recent one was uh, the uh, Drake Snake. Drake Snake. Did you... Did you see Drake's... Drake? Did you see Drake's snake? No. 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 Where have you been? I don't, I don't go on social media anymore, mate. <laughs> What's happened now? Pretty self-explanatory, mate. Uh, Drake got his snake. 
So when you say snake, he's obviously a big fella. Yeah. Well endowed. Yes. Is the term. Mm. Big c- <laughs> <laughs> But for me, it goes past just celebrities. Have you ever watched the show Naked Attraction? <laughs> yeah. Awkward watch. Not for me. Huh? <laughs> and this is this is where Amelia gets worried. Because uh, my favourite sections of the show yeah. is when it's a, a girl who's in the middle and then there's just a lineup of All right. I don't know why, mate. I just, I just get curious, and you know. Do you like? Do you like to know where you are on the pecking order? That of... might be what it is. <laughs> that might be what it is. You got, you got a god complex, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his little. D- <laughs> so that might be where it comes from. That might be where it comes from. That's mad. That show was wicked. Is it still on? I think so. Yeah. It's a dead interesting show. He just puts you off. Like sexual behaviour, because everyone's a proper fiend on it, and they like they're proper yeah. openly yeah. graphic with what they talk about. Like that, um, <laughs> that I'm not going to call her an elderly woman. It's a quite viral viral clip when she's talking <laughs> about toes, toes in my <laughs> <laughs> iconic. <laughs> I love the uh, the confidence yeah. and the openness. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe that's what she enjoys, isn't it? Yeah. Toes in a p- yeah. yeah. She got bored of p- mm. That's what it was. There's a lot of bleeping. In this episode? In this opening. Sorry, guys. <laughs> you can listen to the audio version over on um, Apple and uh, Spotify. Or well, there's Patreon. Oh, if you feel like having a set you a do, bit. Yeah. You do enjoy seeing our faces. Yeah, that's nice. You can Appreciate watch that. the... Appreciate the love. Uncensored version over on our Patreon. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's a good watch. Um, Yeah, so Naked Attraction. I think it's because, you know, we've been on this earth 30 years, let's say now. Let's just count decades. Um, And we've been exposed to a lot of explicit content. I don't, I don't know about you now, but I like a bit of mystery again. I don't like seeing the full shebang. You're almost I- intrigued by the chase. Yeah, I like my wife in, like, a long T-shirt. Mm. And, like, I can't see a lot. But I know it's there. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know what I mean? I wonder how cold they make it in that studio as well. Oh, yeah. But we need we need the actual, like... We need you at your lowest. We want all the penai to disappear. <laughs> yeah, just skin. No one's standing to attention. Has anyone ever done that? Surely. I think there's stories of, of them needing to stop. Producers giving them Viagra. Production... No, no, like, because um, people might have been getting erections and stuff. Which, I mean, can't be helped. Can't be. But... If there's, you know, a naked girl or boy in front of you, whatever your sexual preference, and you're getting turned on by seeing them. It's a very sexual show. Like, even the things they talk about, the things they make them do. Like, you, you know, it's got to, got to have been people who have been, you know. Imagine that. Standing to attention. Get a chub. Get a chub on. <laughs> Speaking of sending it to her attention, mate, um, the idea of World War Three actually scares the shit out of me. I think it's it's something that's on a lot of people's minds at the moment, including my own, including my own, in, in my house as well. You know, it's it's something that you know, I think it is starting to affect people's mental health. You know, that kind of lingering. I mean, all, we can call it a reality because of the. The state of things at the moment. How many wars have we got going on at the minute? It's only a matter of time before they give it a label and say, okay, we're all at, we're all at war. Mm. So it's World War Three, guys. Like Something that we didn't think would ever happen in our lifetime is coming to fruition and it could actually happen, which is f***ing scary. And, you know, if, if that happens, mate, I mean, it's probably likely that we will get drafted. Not me, son. I'm medically diagnosed. <laughs> Yeah, happening. Can yeah? Can you imagine the reality? I mean, you. Well, at these pair. <laughs> to be honest with you, do you want, <laughs> do you want to fight for this country? Let's be real for a minute. Like, I'm gonna say, even like 15, 20 years ago, like patriots of this country would be like, no, you've got to fight for your country. You've got to fight for your country. F- 
that. That. If Rishi Sunak isn't on the front line in his f***ing suit for making all these problems, I don't, I'm not going. F*** him. F*** you and your party. F*** all the parties. F*** Parliament. You've already got little factions there. Yeah. Get them. Give f*** them weapons. off. You go do it. F*** them off. Get to basic training. ASAP Rocky. Idiots. <laughs> all of them. F*** off. That's the war machine, mate. The poor, the little people go to the fighting. Hypothetically, yeah. we had no choice yeah. to go to war because I'm, I'm going to prison before I go to war, by the way. I'll play PlayStation all day where you'll get your head <laughs> blown off. What would you do? Okay, Dan, you get a letter, plop on your doormat. Daisy brings it to you. <laughs> you know, got your said death sentence here, Dad. And now I know you had a different answer to this about four years ago because I remember a vivid conversation that we had. So answer this now. Truthfully, it goes back to what you said. Do you want to fight for this country? No. I have no kind of patriotism or, you know, any of those kind of affinities to, to any country. I don't, you know, I don't think like that. Yeah. I live here. I was born here. So what? Yeah, who gives a shit? I'll fight. I'll fight for my family. Yeah. The person, the where you will see me stationed, is outside of my front door, yeah. defending my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if anyone tries to come in, tries to harm my family, yeah. you're getting sliced up with cheese knives. Yeah. yeah, cheese knives. I've made a homemade bow, and I'm in the top window like Legolas, <laughs> not missing. And guess what? My son's training to do the same thing as well. Because we're going to defend our home. That's where I see my allegiances. Not not to any country, not to any faction. Like, you know, not at all. Um, can you seriously see a reality where people as mentally unstable as us <laughs> <laughs> are making any difference? F no. Honestly. We don't do this podcast for a laugh. Like, do you know what I mean? We're fucked up in the head. Like, you want to throw us there with a gun? The first place that gun's going is in my trap hole. <laughs> <laughs> my brains are on the dirt. Second I've landed. Even if we didn't immediately kill ourselves. I'm having a laugh first. There's nothing but bad that could come from it. Right, first off, there's no food left. Because I'm eating it. Mm. So automatically, I'm taking four people out of the game. So why me? Just send four people with slightly lower appetites. So that's that's negative number one. Yeah, that is. That's, it's pretty negative. If, if I couldn't take my meds. Where are you going to get your meds? Uh, I'm not going to go. Really, I'm going to run out. I'm going to nip to the pharmacy down the corner shop. Am I like in the middle of book nowhere? <laughs> It's not going to happen. And then I'm just going to get up again, schizo, get pissed off at everybody. And it's only going to end in friendly fire. Yeah. Friendly, f well, not so friendly fire. I'm giving it a new label. <laughs> That's your own men. I don't care. Told you to send me to jail. I didn't want to be here. I also think you'd get bullied. Bullied? Yeah. What for? When the boys see you writing in your journal. Bullied in 2024 for having a journal. Mm. You wouldn't hear of it, would you? No. Me getting bullied on the front line. Also... So they tell me to shave it off with me if we're going to back to <laughs> F*** you. F*** you. Shave that off. It ain't coming back. <laughs> Dare you? <laughs> You'll get a buzz cut and thrown out the front door. Shouldn't they make them do that? Or do you reckon, like, too many, um, like, outspoken people would get... Um, what are you trying to say? That there's going to be a lot of people with blue and pink hair on the front lines? Chaining themselves on the front line. Gluing themselves to Barry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big mess. You know what, though, mate? I think reflecting on it, and I hate to say this. Go on. Because now I think that the letter's going to be on our door, our door mat first. Do you think I'll watch this and then think, oh, what would they think they'll get? It? I think we're the perfect candidates. <sighs> and what would you say, that? Suicidal tendencies. We're not really going to be bothered if we die. Um... All of those hours surfing through best gore. Oh. 
Don't act like you didn't do it either. Don't act like you didn't do it. Bestgore.com growing up. Oh, man. Rotten.com. Rotten.com. That was the original one. So when when did you first discover that? Oh, mate. Was it like when the the internet first? Terrifyingly young. Yeah. Terrifyingly young. I can't even remember an age. But I think I remember the first thing like that that I ever watched was... The uh, the execution of Ken Bigley. So, so Ken Bigley was the first one. Ken Bigley. I mean, and those who know, know how long ago that was. And that was when it was new. Was that the beheading? Yes. See, that was in conjunction with Saddam Hussein getting hanged. Was one of the first ones I watched as well. That was late. Was it? Yeah. I remember that going round secondary school. On people's phones? On people's mobiles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bluetooth, infrared? Yeah. <laughs> Hunting it down? Send me that, mate! Gathering round people's phones yeah. to watch it. Everyone's messed up really, aren't they? No wonder we're so f- But, like, what sort of stuff did you scare on that? Okay, so you, you saw the beheading. I used to watch a lot of beheadings, so I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, gang warfare. I, the what? Like, but being open here, like, I don't know why I watch that. I'm not a nutter. To a degree. You know, I'm talking about myself. I know to call myself a nutter. Um, yeah, why did we watch that stuff? It was beheadings. It was gang-affiliated shootings. I'm not too sure. We used to do it a lot in university as well. Like, we used to literally hook the laptop up to the telly <laughs> and spend evenings. I, I don't know. I don't know whether it's... It's some kind of deeper rooted thing where we almost need to watch things like that in order to try and feel a certain way. Mm. You know, do you know what I mean by by I'm saying that? Ish. You know, generations gone by would have put The Exorcist on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would have been absolutely yeah. scared yeah. of yeah. The Exorcist. Yeah. Whereas I think we our generation have been subjected to so much horror. Real sh- Real sh- Probably post 9-11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That we, we, now we can watch films like, you know, Evil Dead, um, Saw. And it's... Enjoy it. Child's Play. It doesn't shock us at all because it's not real. We've seen how horrific real can get just by watching the news. Yeah. So maybe it's something that we seek out in order to feel something because we know that's real. And I know that that's sick. Makes you uncomfortable, though, watching it. Yeah. (laughs) It don't make you feel uncomfortable. I'm scared now. (laughs) You just become so desensitized. Yeah, you do, yeah. You become so desensitized, and I think that may also be a part of it, that we... And I feel maybe in more recent years, actively seeking these things out to purposely desensitize ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Because of the way that we feel mentally. Like, how would you feel if you saw a dead body? Um, would you be bothered? Blank. No, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd care. No, me neither. If it was, you know, if it was a loved one, there's there's different emotions linked to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I don't. I don't think I care. You know, in, in you know, viscera, gore, blood, anything like that. I just it just doesn't affect me one single bit. Did I did I tell you at the time I applied to be an undertaker? <laughs> no. Yeah. So, was this wrestling inspired? <laughs> You thought that was what the job was? <laughs> Rest. <laughs> no. Walk around with a little fat bloke. Or whatever. Um, but no, about two years ago, there was a local, um, just looking for a new job. I was a bit fed up with where I was. Um, I saw like a, a undertaker, like a pool bearer, who was essentially where I was. But the job entailed going to pick up bodies after the police and forensics had gone. Mm. It was dad jobs to pick up the body and bag them up and take them to a funeral place. And like, the, the, they asked me in the interview, would would you be okay with that? I was like, absolutely. Okay. Which is probably why I didn't get the job. 
<laughs> they were worried. So, so. Okay, I'd love it. I'd love it. I don't want him around me. I love the dead. Why didn't you get the job? Maybe because I just shaved my beard off. I was a big fat <laughs> and I was I had a red scalp from shaving my head. Oh, I so looked. That, so what they thought was he's he's one hundred percent going to defile corpses. Yeah, I looked like Uncle Fester. You just screamed human centipede too. That's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Couldn't see you as an Undertaker. Me neither. Don't know why I did it. You know what fascinates me? Go on. Crime scene cleaning. Another job I applied for, come back to this, was a um, forensic photographer. Hmm. Yeah. But it turns out you need another degree for that. <laughs> really? Yeah. What, a boy? Our degree isn't enough. It's, you need some sort of special medical degree. I suppose it's to understand the anatomy and body anatomy of what you're taking pictures of, I guess. Oh, yeah. What to, yeah. What to kind of expect from certain things, where to take evidence pictures from and yeah yeah, yeah. no i get that i get that understanding like spatter that. patterns and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah yeah all right yeah fair enough fair enough <laughs> which is what i said to the lady on the phone when i called up chasing the job why am i chasing these jobs that involve death we are mad that's class yeah. <laughs> good job though yeah. yeah i'd like that it reminds me of like crime scene crime scene cleanup and I, I watch a lot of this on, like, TikTok and stuff. It's fascinating. It is, yeah. yeah it's like that, that curtain behind the curtain. Yeah, yeah. You know, no one thinks, oh, what happens to the, the space after a person's died? So, yeah, maybe we'd be the perfect candidates for war. <laughs> we've, we've talked ourselves into this. Yeah, yeah, we are the it. perfect candidates. I'm going to start doing push-ups. And <laughs> <laughs> start working on my aim. Start working, working on that bow. The bow? Bow? Bow and arrow? I'm taking a bow and arrow. You f***. i last two seconds. It'd be like the shortest war. If it did happen. Oh. Could you imagine talk about nuclear like, war. Twitchy fingers on nuclear missiles. Mm. Oh. If that was to happen, I'd... Oh, man, I wouldn't want to survive a po- apocalyptic, like, post-nuclear war. Because the disease and the radiation and... Oh, you'd watch everyone around you. You love just dying from these chemical. Oh, it's brutal. The thought of that is more scary than just getting blown away. Yeah, you get yeah. blown away, you get blown away. You, the heat would, would and pressure would be that much that you wouldn't feel anything. But if you did, if for some reason you you survived, it's not worth it. It's not going to be Fallout Three, and you're just going to grow with dog meat. Killing death claws. Yes. <laughs> not going to happen. You just have like, oh, man. It's brutal. Do you think we'll ever get to that point? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In our lifetime. If one person presses the button, it's all over. We almost we almost did get to that point. I don't know whether, actually, whether it's a real, a real story, but there's a story from like the 80s, I think it was, when one of the Russian... Defense systems glitched and it sent them a message saying that the US had launched missiles. And the only reason that there was a nuclear, there wasn't a nuclear war was because the operator thought that it was a glitch. Imagine if someone was having a stressed day and they just didn't think, I'm like, we can retaliate! <laughs> Putin! Putin! We've got to ret- the f- Presti! The f- just like that. Did you have you read the statistics about the size of the Russian army compared to like ours? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Put nuclear war away. We just still have no chance. Oh yeah, but even you know the size of the American army and the Chinese army and stuff like we're, but it's you know it's all relative. We're tiny. That's why we got mates. <laughs> 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 I mean, sadly, I don't think that yeah, army sizes matter because. It takes one push of a button to launch. Where would they fight? If like if there's war, what would be the land? Do you think Europe would get it? I've no idea. It'd be the halfway point, wouldn't it? I suppose it'd be Ukraine and maybe Poland and. I honestly have no idea. I don't know the legalities of war. Like what are the rules? 
Honestly, I don't think there is any. You can't just walk into Poland and say, like, this is the battleground. There's Poland army. Just be like, we're involved now. Defending our country. What happened. World War Two. I never thought we'd experience it's, anything like it. It's scary and stressful to think about. It really is. And, you know, you do think about it daily. That's why I don't watch the news or anything. I just live my own little sheltered life. Leave me alone with my wrestling. Until that, that letter. <laughs> HMRC again. Oh, no, it's war. So, uh, mate, I think we better start working on the old...